From the Lower Colorado River Authority, this is Wavelength. Hi everyone, welcome to the July edition of Wavelength. LCRA has lost one of its founding fathers. 89-year-old Sim Gideon died June 12th in Austin. The former general manager and longtime friend of the agency even helped write the legislation which created the LCRA 62 years ago. Sim Gideon started with the LCRA as an attorney, later became general counsel and assistant general manager then he became LCRA's third general manager in 1956, where he stayed until his retirement in 1973. Under his leadership, the LCRA doubled its electric generating capacity by building a gas-fired generating plant in Bastrop, which would later bear his name. He was a longtime friend and advisor to President Lyndon Johnson and worked with him in the late 1930s to secure the financing for the construction of Mansfield Dam which created Lake Travis and became the principal tool in controlling floods on the Colorado River. Mr. Gideon sat down with General Manager Mark Rose in 1994 for what would be his last television interview. He talked about the history of the agency and its tremendous effect on the growth of this region. And he had some advice for current employees. If you were talking to an employee today, on their first day on the job, what would you tell them? I'm telling you, stay with it. I just never leave the authority because I, the authority, in my opinion, is such a good organization to work for. And I know it, it was good to me. And uh, uh, I enjoyed working for the authority. We hear a lot these days about growth along the I-35 corridor between Austin and San Antonio. And right in the middle of that corridor is the city of San Marcos. There has been tremendous growth in San Marcos, which means a sharp increase in the demand for electricity and other city services. San Marcos Utility bought this substation from the LCRA in 1994. It serves the downtown area and needed a major overhaul to handle the new load. There's been a growth spurt in here. All that's been coming into Austin. Housing is cheaper here than it is in Austin. Uh, we've had a load growth with the everything from apartments and houses to the new Super Walmart. Uh, the we were up to where in the summertime in the peak peak load area, it was sometimes questionable if we we're going to be able to make it to the next day. This takes the worry out of it. There was a need to upgrade this station and do some work. There was a need for maintenance and LCRA crews from the 10th code department, uh, including engineering, including the construction under Roy Holston, maintenance Sammy Niesner. All those crews came together, various ones at different parts in this project, along with the crews from San Marcos, which is also important and work together to upgrade this station. And it's been a very good project. We've done it in, under time, uh, going to be under budget. So uh, it's been a good job. Coordination between San Marcos crews and LCRA construction and maintenance crews allow different phases of the work to be done at the same time, saving the city a lot of money. When we bring in a mobile transformer, that enables you to de-energize the equipment. While you got to de-energize, if you can do as much of the work as possible, it'll save you a lot of money. If you have to bring it in a second time to perform maintenance or perform construction, you almost doubled your cost. All of the equipment upgrades and maintenance was completed at the substation just in time for the hot summer days coming up. Back at the May meeting, the LCRA Board of Directors passed the business plan and operating budget for fiscal year 97, which started July 1. 
Now this is the first budget passed under the new lines of business structure here at the LCRA. The $487 million budget is 3% lower than last year's budget and maintains the freeze on electric and water rates for the fifth year in a row. This budget is very different from past budgets because of the restructuring of the LCRA into four separate but interdependent lines of business. This move is designed to help meet the challenges of deregulation and increased competition in the utility industry. The lines of business are GenCo, Tensco, WaterCo, and Community Services. GenCo, which is the power plants that generate electricity, also generates about $310 million in revenue for the company. Tensco, which transmits and markets that electricity to our customers, produces about $125 million in revenue. WaterCo, which manages water resources, hydroelectric generation, and provides water and wastewater services to our customers, produces about $27 million in revenue for the fiscal year. And the fourth line of business, Community Services, which provides parks, environmental services, and economic development assistance to communities in our service area, is funded largely by revenue from the sale of electricity and water, but it does generate some $4 million a year from grants and other fees. Very clearly when you go back to the LCRA Act, it intended utility operations, electric and water, to help pay for the community development activities, the community services activities. That's the way the thing was set up in 1934 and it still functions that way. This is the first time when you go to the first set of numbers in the business plan that you really see this is what Genco does, this is what Tensco does, Waterco, this is how much money they produce that's used to fund the community services or the capital program. It's so clearly laid out and really for the first time and the best time that I can recall. And it's right there in black and white for anybody that wants to look at it. All four lines of business receive and now pay for services such as accounting, legal, human resources, and payroll, which are provided by the Corporate Services Division. Well, they say necessity is the mother of invention, and that's certainly proving to be the case here at Tom Miller Dam. For years, engineers have had to lower the lake to gain access to the floodgates, but they finally come up with a better mousetrap that allows them to keep the lake full and gain access to the floodgates at the same time. You can imagine how difficult it is to work on the front of a floodgate. The traditional method is to lower the lake to expose the gate or send divers down to perform the maintenance. About a year ago, LCRA's hydro engineers began looking for a way to do it easier and faster. They found the answer just downstream at the Smithville Railcar Facility. We've actually uh, bid on this job internally and uh, we're able to uh, beat all the outside contractors. We're able to uh, get the job. The goal was to build a floating bulkhead that could seal off the gate without taking the lake down. And you have a dam gate. This be the particular one, be like at Starkey. And then it drops back off to the river. Right there, at each end of these dam gates, they have what they call concrete pier noses. And what we're going to do is we're going to have this is going to be a barge. It's going to be made up of four sections. Consequently, the lake level is like this. These things will just barely float above the water. Once we get this in place, then we will dewater this area here. Then we can take this dam gate completely out. Now the floating bulkhead will serve to hold the lake back. Construction on the bulkhead started last fall and arrived at Tom Miller Dam on June 11. This thing here is 60 feet long, and it's four feet high, and a little over two feet wide. And it, it's, it's, it's full of air. Uh, it has, has all these air compartments in it, so that when you put it in the water, it'll float. Now there's one over there in the water, and you can see that it's floating. Within 24 hours, the bulkhead was sealed to the floodgate and deemed a huge success. Uh, even though this thing was designed up north, it was built right here in Texas at our own Smithfield rail car facility. And those looks like those guys have done a super job. Our hat's off to them. We really wanted those guys to do the job, and I'm glad they had the time and the, uh, and the desire to do it. I think it was a lot of fun for them. Uh, and we're looking forward to seeing this thing work and getting some work done on our floodgates. 
In about six months, the work will be completed here at Tom Miller Dam, and the floating bulkheads will be moved from here upstream to Starkey Dam for some much-needed work on the gates up there. Well, right now, it's time for another edition of Around the LCRA. And this month, we head downstream to the Sim Gideon Power Plant, where Larry Hendricks picks up the story. I'm Larry Hendricks. I'm the maintenance manager at Sim Gideon Power Plant. Behind me, you see a tour group that is here today to commemorate 30 years of service in the LCRA system. Sim Gideon Power Plant came online in 1965, and here today in 1996, we're having a celebration of 30 years of continuous service. We're having tours to all of the neighbors and all of the people in the communities and anyone else that wanted to come to come here to look to see what we've done over the last 30 years and to see how we plan to do other things out into the future. One of our focal points is the uh, new controls project for unit number three. We spent a lot of money on that particular project from September of last year until now. It is now up and running. It is making LCRA money and it is doing a, it is doing a fine job. It's just the plant itself that's incredible. And the changes with the new technology now are just unbelievable. It's wonderful. More importantly for Bastrop, there's 75 employees here, and plus the recreation of the lake. And it's, it's been a, a very important part of our community since 1962 when it was built. It's really uh, uh, impressive to see this plan here. And, and uh, being 30 years old, that, that it's so nicely kept. You're welcome to come by anytime. We'll always show you what we've got going on here. We're very proud of the plant. It's a clean plant. It's a very productive plant. We've got a lot of very cooperative and enthusiastic people who like to work here. We'll see you next time. If you operate a boat in Texas this summer, you can expect to see a stepped up presence of law enforcement officers on lakes all across the state. The campaign will run from Memorial Day to Labor Day and involves the cooperative efforts of the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, the Department of Public Safety, Texas Alcoholic Beverage Control, the LCRA, and local law enforcement. The three issues that, we'll be, that we will be pushing this summer are first, that BWI, boating while intoxicated laws, will be strictly enforced. Secondly, that life jackets save lives. And thirdly, that personal watercraft are involved in far too many accidents. We want to send a message in Texas that we've got safe lakes, that it's great to be out with your family and friends boating on our waterways, but we don't want you drunk. We want you to be safe. We want you to be thoughtful for your fellow citizen. Far too many Texans are injured as a result of people not worrying about their neighbor. And so you're about to hear of a plan that is going to be tough in its nature, but designed to do one thing, and that is to take drunk drivers off our lakes and to protect innocent people so they can come and enjoy themselves. As someone responsible for managing the lake, and I'll speak for everybody who's managing a lake in Texas today, is that the boating issue, the safety issue, has gone on far too long. Uh, the approach in the past has been far too piecemeal, and it is really time that there be a statewide effort. Uh, there's legislation being reviewed, and, and of course we fully support that, and we desperately need the additional law enforcement uh, support. According to Parks and Wildlife, there were 62 boating fatalities in Texas in 1994 and 60 in 1995. Alcohol is a major contributing factor in many boating accidents and fatalities. There's a brand new stop on the Colorado River Trail. It's the FM 521 River Park located in Matagorda County near Bay City. This 13-acre park has a 60-foot fishing pier, playground, baseball field, picnic sites, and a pavilion for group activities. The park is the result of a cooperative effort between the LCRA, Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, and Matagorda County. And I think that it's partnerships like this that will continue to take Matagorda County uh, into the future. And if we can pool our resources like has been done here through cooperative efforts, we're going to be continued to be known as one of the front runners of counties in the state of Texas. The FM 521 River Park is the third and final project developed under a $500,000 matching grant from Parks and Wildlife. 
White Rock Park in LaGrange, and Beeson's Park near Columbus were dedicated in October of 1995. This is quite a contrast to 1992 when the LCRA did not have one single park or access point on the Colorado River below Austin. We now have park projects completed or underway in Bastrop, Smithville, Columbus, LaGrange, expansion of the Warden Park, two parks in this area and this park here today. And to me, that's a significant accomplishment. Uh, we weren't sure how we were going to get here, and it took a lot of creativity to get here. Each one of these parks, in a very short period of time, from 92 until today, we've gone from a thought to having some type of facility and a good partnership established with each one of the counties uh, in each one of these areas. And that is from San Saba. I left out Burnett and San Saba and some other places where we've also done some river and projects. Now we need to begin to talk about what these parks can all become and how each one of them can be made better and how there is a different round uh, of improvements that can be made. Since the beginning of the Colorado River Trail in 1992, the LCRA has been involved in the development of over 30 parks in the 10-county district from San Saba to the Gulf of Mexico. And there are several other park projects currently underway. This month on Customer Corner, we head out to Gillespie County and the headquarters of the Central Texas Electric Co-op. CTEC was founded in 1947 and now serves nearly 24,000 customers in a nine-county area, and 99% of the co-op's customers are residential. CTEC now has 120 employees. Bob Lott has been general manager of the co-op for five years. He came up through the ranks, spending seven years as financial officer and assistant GM. He says the Central Texas service area is really growing. The co-op is booming with growth. Gillespie County and, and Kerr County and Kendall County, the southern half of our service territory has experienced the biggest boom. Uh, last year it was approximately a 10% growth in that area. System-wide it was almost five. In order to keep up with this growing electrical demand in the area, LCRA is building a new substation in cooperation with the City of Fredericksburg and CTEC. It's a prime example of how joining forces and creating new partnerships can better serve the end users. Well, to me, customer service is the bottom line of, of the entire business. Uh, if the customer's not happy, then you've got problems. Uh, they start to look for other, the customers will start to look for other problems, uh, and it becomes a battle. Uh, if the customer's happy, then the organization runs much easier. The more services that you can provide that are needed to those customers, the better opportunity that you've got to serve them and to find a niche for them. Yeah, 10 4. The co op is striving to increase productivity through better communications. The three branch offices in the area are now wired to the home office. The co op is working on a remote meter reading system. And they are also working on a fiber optic network plan for the service area. This new electronic mapping system makes updating changes to the electric distribution grid as simple as a click of the mouse. Before it would take us approximately about a year to update our modelers. Now we have our information is given to us and we put it on the computer and it's updated. It's, it's, it's a, um, it's when something, somebody needs a new map, we can give it to them real quick. Bob Lott is also vice president of the Association of Wholesale Customers, which consists of the 11 co-ops in 33 cities, which are served wholesale electricity by the LCRA. He says that in the changing utility industry, working together and providing new and better services will be the key. But the future to me is, is wraps around communication. It's, it's communicating with those customers. It's communicating with your partners, whether it be a neighboring co-op or, or LCRA or the AWC. Lot says new technology will also make the workplace much safer, which is the number one priority at CTEC. Employees at the Fayette Power Project may have been a little late in their celebration of Earth Day, but they were nonetheless enthusiastic. 
Over 100 employees participated in park and shoreline cleanups, tree plantings, and even scrubbing up the old cemetery located near the plant. They're enjoying this as something that's not a routine part of their job. It's something different. They feel like it's helping the environmental quality in a lot of ways. In particular, the, the trash pickup and the cleanups uh, tend to, to leave the impression with the community that we do care and we want to be a, a better steward of our resources. And Like someone told me a while ago, the fishermen are real happy that we're doing our part to clean up the lake and make it a better place. It gives us an opportunity to get outside, those of us that aren't outside around the lake. It's so pretty out here and um, make, makes us feel like we're helping out the community by keeping it nice around the lake. We're planting uh, new uh, actual trees and, and bushes and uh, we're bringing them in from a, a nursery and uh, everyone out here this morning has just been planting and, and mulching and, and we're setting up sprinkler systems to uh, keep them all watered since we don't have any rain. <laughs> After the morning long cleanup, employees were treated to a barbecue lunch at the FPP Employee Park. As the drought continues here in Central Texas, the mayors of more than 20 cities in Travis and Williamson County have formed a new alliance to stretch the water as far as possible. The cities have vowed to coordinate their water conservation programs in an effort to make it easier for citizens to comply. We decided that uh, let's just go ahead and get on board with, with Austin's plan. So that's what we're doing today is uh, as, uh, as an alliance of all the cities, we're, we're adopting Austin's water conservation plan uh, for the foreseeable future. The concept of regional water conservation has drawn support from both the Lower Colorado River Authority as well as the Brazos River Authority. Uh, water conservation is an ongoing and a continuous activity that everybody should be involved in. It's a responsibility of everyone. And like the governor said last week, every drop counts. You take a couple of hundred pounds of catfish, a few thousand french fries and hush puppies, one huge pot of beans. They are done, ready to serve. This is a taste test of uh, some of uh, Bruce Hicks's beans. We've got plans for these later on this evening. <laughs> Mm. Add some ice cold beverages, several hundred hungry people, and you've got an old fashioned fish fry and social. This event was held in Giddings, and the idea is to bring local elected officials and active citizens together with LCRA staff and board members in a relaxed atmosphere. We were able to find out what was going on in several area communities. We're so pleased with the help and the assistance that they've given us and the people that have offered uh, the staff members that, that come in regularly. We're so proud of our Riverbend Park and we're drawing so many people in and receiving so many raves and it really is helping the economy of Smithville. We're extremely pleased to be associated with LCRA. I've been with uh, the Economic Development Foundation for a little over a year now and we're working on a number of prospects with the LCRA and, and the LCRA does a great job for us as a small community because we don't have the representation that the big eight might have, uh, the big eight cities here in, in the state of Texas and uh, we're able to go on marketing trips with them, uh, they, they carry the brunt of the cost for that. Uh, it, it's really a great organization for a community like Brenham, Texas. I can't be happier with the customer service. Uh, we call LCRA, uh, whether it be with mapping or some kind of rate study, things such as that, and y'all are right out and give us great service and give us samples of the work, what it's going to look like, and uh, I'm real excited about it. Of course, Beeson's Park has been a great success. We've got so much use at the park right now. I kind of feel like a park manager, even though I'm county judge, because so many people want to use our park. And of course, the LCRA has helped us in numerous other areas. Uh, you know, I know right now through the coalition of judges, we're looking at low water dams and the feasibility in that area. Uh, LCRA has been very beneficial to us in that. Also helping us work with Sheridan Park, who is also uh, has a Parks and Wildlife grant. LCRA has sent in some assistance on that. And the LCRA is also assisting us with our fireman's frequency that we're going to have in Colorado County. One frequency for all the fire departments. From parks to electric service to economic development, the LCRA means many things to many different people.
Too many people and too little water. That's the story that many people are telling these days out of Lake Travis. You know, the sailboaters are mad at the power boaters. The power boaters are angry at the jet skiers. And many fishermen are perturbed with them all. Meantime, the folks who control the lake say everyone just ought to take a deep breath and be thankful they get to use it at all. KB24's Greg Grugan is standing by at the lake this Friday to tell us more. Greg? Well, Bob, I'm told that recreational satisfaction here at Lake Travis is at an all-time low. Now, the people at the Lower Colorado River Authority say it's not the lake's fault. It's doing exactly what it was built to do. Boating on Lake Travis. Many Central Texans think it's their birthright. But what fewer and fewer seem to understand is that recreation was never what this 66 miles of flooded canyon was built for. Flood control and water conservation are the primary purposes of Lake Travis. With boat numbers rising and lake levels falling, there's no better time to remind folks of the basics. That lake doesn't have a flat bottom and it doesn't have parallel sides. It's not a swimming pool. It's a great place to store water. But most see the lake as a public playground, a single-minded attitude that can lead to catastrophe when drought brings the treacherous floor of Travis closer to the surface. Add hundreds of new sailboats, jet skis, and power boats, throw in thousands of fishermen and swimmers, and the formula becomes even more volatile. The terrain has changed. There's more sandbars up, more hazard spots. LCRA rangers like Janice Tomechka know that the danger rises as the sun goes down. That's because boaters can't avoid what they can't see. During the day, sun, sun, uh, when the sun's up, of course, um, the shallower water is a lot of color, and the deeper, deeper water is very dark. But at night, you cannot tell shallow water from dark water. You know, it's just all one color. And you cannot see the sandbars that are coming up, the hazards, the rocks, other boaters. That's the biggest reason nighttime speed on the lake has been lowered to 20 miles per hour. A lone fisherman believes it's a new rule most will follow, and a reckless few ignore. Well, you're always going to get the people that want to do what they want to do, you know. Even if they put, you know, rules on, the, on a sign out there that said no fishing, you know how people are still going to fish, you know. Now, if in fact, if in fact there are people who do not follow the rules, the rangers are pretty sure there will be accidents. And if there are accidents, there will be some new restrictions. So the future here is pretty much up to the people who use this great resource. Bob, Judy? You said it. Thanks, Greg. The dry weather leaves lake levels low. It means added danger this holiday weekend especially. Don't be a pain in the boat. It sounds funny, but it's a new safe boating campaign. The Department of Public Safety will patrol roads to lake areas. State officials will monitor marinas that sell alcohol, and there will be extra patrols on the lake watching for drunk drivers. Some of these lakes have gotten so dangerous, and so many wonderful, innocent people who are enjoying their life are getting injured and maimed and killed, it's going to stop, and we're going to get it stopped starting this Memorial Day weekend. Governor Bush got out on the lake today, too. He also is pushing for safety. Last year alone, 66 people died here in Texas in boating-related accidents. Well, that's it for this edition of Wavelength. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time.